Jeff and Jeremy. It's like a radio gasm. I said, hey, babe, check it out on the podcast. Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, and Spotify. All this is going viral. People need to learn how to stay in their lane. I, good morning, by the way. It's Jeff and Jeremy. There's a brewery that's developed the hottest beer. They used a California, I'm sorry, a Carolina Reaper. I don't know what a California would be like. Probably soft and lame. But a Carolina Reaper red pepper to make their beer. Do you remember when we went to uh, the the California Festival of Beers and you drank that one from Santa Barbara? And I don't oh, know. It made me vomit. Had jalapenos or something in it, or habaneros. I mean, the night before probably helped aid in my because I didn't really want to go that day. Yeah. You're like, come on, man, let's go try this hot one. And I'm like, why? See, the whole thing for me is beer washes down heat. When I eat spicy food, like Mexican food, there's nothing more that I love to have with some really good tacos. Spicy Mexican food is a really good beer. I think that's why beer is so popular in Mexico, right? I mean, because it goes well with spicy food. Now, what these people have done, the the Maltese Brewing Company. Oh, I actually know these people. They've been invited to the Firestone thing. Were you with me? I don't know if you were, but um, I've never I, been I to tried. That thing, so I, no, I wasn't with you. I'm glad you remember. I I, I remember going. Wow, Virginia, huh? And is that a like, subtle? Yeah. was that a subtle Jeremy Bragg right there? Uh no, I just remembered it. Were you yeah, with sure. Me? Yeah. Were you with me at that thing? No. Yeah, you're not cool, cool enough to be with cool me. Well, I, I was with my I, cool friends. I wasn't. I wasn't there. I was with my cool friends. I don't bring you around them. That's your subtle way of um, saying. I'm anyways, cool enough to get invited to this thing. You are not. They made it. They had a really good uh, hazy IPA, like that East Coast IPA. But that's all I remember about them. I, I I don't know if I'd even want to try a beer that's supposed to be a hot. The world's hottest beer is what they're calling it. Um. You need a gimmick. The beer, which is being called a Signal One 2.0, uses the Carolina Reaper pepper. I think I think breweries. There's so many. Here's the, with craft brews. Remember glitter beer, and I mean, yeah. they were just like, come on, nobody wants there's that. So many craft breweries now that unless you've you know arrived as a craft brewer, that at some point in time you need to figure out a way to get your gimmick in. And then the, the, gear, the gimmick is the hottest beer. Get get on the map. You know? My thing is, if you eat something hot, what do you? What's the first thing you do? You go to grab something you can drink, right, to cool it down. What do you do with this? Maybe they hand you pretzels or something or bread, and they're like, "All right, just suck on this for a while." I think it was. I don't even know what the it was. I think it was Santa Santa Barbara Brewing Company or something like that. The the beer that I tasted. It was weird because I remember the year before. I had at the Festival of Beers when it was at Avila. And it was a hot day, and it was delicious. Um, then they moved it to uh, the Madonna Meadows. Or no, they not even the Meadows, up in that parking lot. They just moved it up in the parking lot. And um, and I went, and I was like... Which I, I think I like better than the grass. I liked that beer last year. I'm going to go try it again this year. And I went and tried it, and it had an adverse effect. But it was windy and cold because it was at the Madonna. So you felt like you liked it because the weather was a maybe, little bit cooler? Maybe the spicy, liked it a little bit more. spicy beer Or maybe was they a backed off. Better. Maybe they backed off. Maybe they realized that, hey, this is making guys throw up, so let's, ch- let's back it up a little bit. That was not a good uh, endorsement for that beer on that day at the Madonna parking lot. But to, for full disclosure, the night before it was a bit rough. And um, I really didn't feel like going to the Festival of Beers, but I was drugged to it by by my friends. So, hmm. what friends, right? <laughs> wow, that's the first time you've ever considered me a friend because I was there. Um, so, Are there other people there too, though. I don't know. That's what you have to ask yourself. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I like a spicy, a spicy Bloody Mary. Why couldn't I like a spicy beer? I just beer has a mental place for me. You know, we were talking to Keith from the Young Dubliners the other day, and he was like thinking, you know, he goes to breweries all the time to play, and he likes Guinness, but everybody wants him to try their type of Guinness, and he's like, no, it's different. You don't understand. No, he said he didn't like Guinness that much. No, he loves Guinness. He had one right there in front of him. Oh. He, but he likes Guinness because Guinness is made and tastes a certain way that nobody can reproduce, is what I thought he said. Okay. And these other breweries that are trying to make something like it, like a dark stout, they're like, yeah, but you love Guinness. He's like, yeah, but I love Guinness because Guinness is Guinness. This is not Guinness. 
I drink other stuff. Is that video still up on our Facebook? Yeah. yeah. Jeff over, and Jeremy. Go over our Facebook page. Uh, they play lots of great songs, too, and you can find out uh, how much it costs to get the, the young Dubliners to play a private house party at your house. If you missed it, we talked about it. God, that's awesome. It's a lot of money, but... No, it's not if you pool your sources. If you get 10 people together or more, 20 people together? Yeah, it's doable. 40 people together? You could do 40... Well, not in the, not not right now. Don't tell anybody. What's the what's the depends capacity? On, Remember they on, used to talk about capacity, like what you could have at your place, how many people could gather. It depends on how big your place is. I don't know what the red tier is. What if you is. have an eighty acre ranch in yeah. Creston? Right. Then you could get you know eight hundred people together. Everybody gets their own acre. That's socially distant. That's bad math. That by is the way. horrible math. But uh, you get a tenth of an acre. Yeah. It's still eighty acres, eighty that, people. That's still everybody gets their own that, acre. That that's is, what I meant. That to say. is still socially distanced. A tenth of an acre is still socially distanced. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I guess you could go look for the Maltese Brewing Company out of Virginia if you really want to try something weird like this. I want to say there are certain beers that I've really enjoyed that are, you know, outside the norm, you know, like, like the stouts and the, you know, those types of beers I never had until I moved to California. I'm not a big fan of IPA, but I like the East Coast IPAs. Um, the fruit and beer, I've, you know, Pyramid Brewing Company did the apricot ale and I've always liked that. I haven't seen it in a long time. Um, TK uh, Brewery that made root beer. They made a Weisenberry brew that was really good. So sometimes it works, but you're going you're going back a ways with your beer selections with the apricot and the, and the Weisenberry and the Thomas Kemper. Yeah, is Thomas Kemper still a thing? No. What happened was Pyramid and uh, Thomas Kemper spawned from the same thing. Uh, Thomas Kemper was a beer, and then the the couple got a divorce, and she took over the soda division. That was and took the Thomas Kemper name. He had to start off and and do everything that was beer related under the pyramid name. Oh, that's good to know. Beer, that, that, beer that's history. why it makes sense. And you're that's probably one, why they pulled it off. And you're the one getting invited to the Firestone Invitational. Not me. <laughs> Whoa, Jeff and Jeremy in the morning. Jeff and Jeremy here online at kzoz dot com. Twenty dollars to Federico's later. Just for listening to the show, we'll ask you maybe. A, Something about this. Maybe this will be the topic of the show today. I, can't, I, don't, I can't guarantee it. We don't figure that out until it's time to do it. But if you know the answer to the question we asked about, something we talked about, you could win $20 to go to Federico's Fresh Mix every Tuesday. Taco Tuesday, $2.50 tacos, and they are delicious. They also do a special on beers, too. Uh, check this out real quick. Mesquite City Council just approved updates to the city code regarding noise enforcement. Any noise that distresses or disturbs your neighbors could mean a hefty fine if it, quote, annoys, distresses, or disturbs the quiet comfort or response of a reasonable person with ordinary sensibilities. <laughs> Violations are a Class C misdemeanor subject to a fine up to $2,000. Okay, this is the, the beginning of cancel culture. This is when they okay. first started with... Uh, uh, you know, if your neighbor's making too much noise, what you is call that? the cops. What is that? It's n neighbors reporting neighbors, which is happening entirely too much under uh, the guise of the past uh, 12 months. Um, you know, I had to go talk to my neighbors about a tree that was growing through a fence and over and scratching our vehicles when we drive by. We, You know, I've been trimming it, but I'm like, they should really do it. So um, I was all worked up about it. I called the homeowners association at the condo place next door. And then I just went over there and talked to the people. They were both really nice older ladies and they're going to get it done. And I just realized right then and there, if we just talk to people more and handle it ourselves, then things are, it's, it, the it just kind of, it just, it cools everything down instantly. Now, now I know that person. I've introduced myself. I know their name. They know my name. We, we talked and now it's going to get done. Okay. So I have two trees on two separate pieces of property coming over Your my fence because my fence along the back of the, I, th I think there's, I mean, I think it touches four different properties. We have a long, skinny backyard. Um, and one tree is one person's tree and the other tree is another person's tree. And the, the, the trees are starting to bloom and grow over the, the other side of the fence, which I have no problem with except for, it gets windy in the afternoons, especially this time of year, and things blow into the pool. So <laughs> yeah, Nobody thinks about that when they want to get a pool. Right. All the crap you're always cleaning out yeah. of it. And especially since you can't control it, it's your neighbor's tree. Right. Well, so you got to go knock. What is the, okay, Stop and knock. So, so what is the, what is the knock thought process? Knock and chat. Do I take care of it myself and no. just draw a line straight from the fence line on up 
um, for the tree and just and just prune the tree to the best of my ability straight up um, on both trees, or do I go over and talk to both neighbors? And I mean, what, what if one neighbor says, no, absolutely not, do not touch my tree, and then another neighbor says, okay, well, that's fine, you can do that, then where, where do I sit? Really, the problem's not yeah. been solved unless it can all be eliminated. Here's, I think, your options, and those are, I mean, you've laid it out. I would go talk to your neighbors and say, listen, your tree's coming over the fence. I was curious if you could handle that for us. Maybe just keep it on your side handle of the Handle it for you. Yeah. I'd say, well, screw you, pal. That's what I would say to somebody. You would? Yeah. Well, it's... Technically, I mean, I don't know what the law is on this. They, they, it's not supposed to come over the property line. So if there's something over the property but line, but if it's in the airspace, it's not coming over the property line, touching my ground. It's in the airspace. Whose fence is it? It's our fence. I it's believe. your fence. Okay, I believe. So, anyways, my point is, I think that if it's touching your fence, then they have to deal with it. But if it's, it's coming what, over. What if it's not touching the fence? What if it goes up? And out. Well, I don't know. You might have to call, but I believe they sh- they're supposed to take care of it. It's supposed to stay on their side of the property. Now, if they say, you know, go ahead, you can do Does it. We're not going to do it. line extend up, though? I, these are questions I can't answer. Oh, okay. I'm just saying, from what I understand from Judge Judy, that if it goes over the property line, they have to take care of it. Now, what if you go trim the tree and it dies, and then they try to sue you for killing their tree? Well, I'll buy them another tree. It was like... Fifty nine ninety nine at Lowe's. No, this tree's been thirty years. I mean, they There's they can come value. after it. Yeah, it's, it's got emotional value. Too. I was talking to my landlord, and he was spraying some Roundup uh, along the fence um, of the driveway to kill weeds. This was a number of years ago, and it sprayed over the fence into the person's yard on the other side, wiped out a bunch of their bushes. Said it cost him a lot of money, thousands of dollars. He had to sign papers. This whole thing. Jesus. So this is. I'm only bringing this up. Uh, just because it's, it's somebody shared something with me that happened. Now, maybe he could have fought this, who knows, but he decided to just obviously make it go away. And I think, you know, when you get an attorney involved and then you end up paying, there's probably a reason for that. So uh, you have to be careful with neighbors. And the best thing I think you could do, especially since you're in a new neighborhood, new neighbors, go over and meet your neighbors. Have you met them yet? Just the ones on both sides. That's it. Oh, so you have met these people? No, these people are on another street. Oh, Another side. Okay. Of the thing. So they're not on your side. They're behind you. Probably don't like us because we're like loud kids. No. So you don't know that. In their you don't know that. They may love having your kids. Maybe they're just an old person who sits there by themselves all day. And you, when your kids come out and play, it brings joy to their hearts. You just don't know until you go over there. I wish I was your neighbor. I'd Can I show up with I'd the kids? I'd be such a jerk. Can I show up with the kids? And like by I my would side. stand over the fence with hoses and hose your kids down every time they came out. Yeah, because you hate kids. <laughs> I don't hate kids. I love oh, kids. Really? I love tormenting them. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, yeah. So I think that's your option. You got to go talk to your neighbor, see if they'll trim the I think trees. that's the best Most option. times, they'll do the right thing. I truly think that's the best option. You'll know right away if there's going to be a problem neighbor, if they say, if it's a problem, you know, I, probably, you. You know, I probably won't deal with it, and I'll be like, all right. But I think you have every right. If that tree is coming over your property line, and it's dropping debris and flowers and leaves and stuff like that in your yard, to trim that sucker right up the fence line. But I don't own a home, and I don't live in Paso Robles, so you might want to look into that a little bit further than taking advice from pa- this guy. Paso Robles has a special jurisdiction renounced only to its own town when it comes to these things? Oh, yeah. you would. Yeah, I don't know who you would talk to. I mean, you would talk to somebody. Maybe call your real estate agent and say, hey, who would you talk to about property lines and property lines? Yeah, they, laws? Know, they know those things. Maybe I'll give Fred a call. Wake up. Jeff and Jeremy in the morning. So I guess Shaq was on Conan. He was talking about uh, hazards of the game. And it's not, you know, getting hurt playing basketball or anything else like that. I think this has happened to any of us uh, that have played sports at some point in their life, rubbed a little too much Bengay on their thighs, and then started screaming for out of pain. I always used to see Icy Hot in the locker room. And one day I kind of had like a thigh bruise, and the guy rubbed it, but he rubbed it too high. Ooh. So during the game, my little guy started getting hot. Like, I thought something was wrong. And it got to the point where I was like, hey, man, I'm, I think I need to go to, I, I need a doctor. Like, you know, my, my little guys are on fire. So he's like, oh, I think I put the icy hot too high. So now I take a shower. Boy, I thought I was in hell. So then I'm in there screaming, oh, ah. Who are the Bob and Tom uh, copycats there sitting there with him? I don't know. Uh, oh, God. He's got a creepy voice, doesn't he? Shaq? I love Shaq. Um, I love Shaq. I, you and I have talked about this before. This has happened to us. I remember I was in junior high or high school, and after two days and uh, in football practice, I remember my legs were killing me. 
I didn't, I just, you know, Ben Gay, not Icy Hot, because back then it was Ben Gay. And I rubbed it on, and I went to lay down in my bed, and next thing I know, I wake up out of a sleep, and I am just on fire. And went and sat and turned the tub on and just soaked there. And it was like 1 in the morning, and my mom's screaming, what the hell's going on? I'm like, oh, my God, I'm burning myself. So you had to tell your mom. She woke up because the bathroom was right next to their bedroom. I know our poll question is, can you not scream when you're on a roller coaster? And when this happened to me, because the last place, I mean, keep in mind, I was a single, single mother was raising me. So when it happened to me and I put it on my thighs after basketball practice and it came in contact, the sensitive area came in contact with my thighs. I was like, you know, like when they used to cut off like a, a, a finger, an appendage in the field so you didn't get gangrene, they would have you bite into a belt. Yeah. That's what I was doing. Um, you didn't because, just go to the shower? No, because I'm not going to have my mom wonder why I'm taking a shower. At, like, I think it was, this happened, it was like right at like six o'clock in the evening, like right after dinner time. Oh my God, dude, take a shower. And um, And I was just sitting there. I didn't want. To disclose, I was hiding the fact that this was happening, and I were just, you afraid she was going to say, "Let me look at it"? Yes, <laughs> yes, because I was like fifteen. Or Don't make kids that make it better. I don't know. I was early teens, oh, and, and and I was like, God, uh, last boundaries, thing I, mom, boundaries. Yeah, the last thing I want is my mom checking out this area right now. So I just go to sit here and deal with the pain, and I dealt with the pain for probably 20, 25 minutes, and then it started to subside. There's more here. Apparently, there was a janitor that gave him some sort of... Um, a fix? Suggestion, yeah. How's a janitor? There was a Spanish janitor in there, and he said, uh, compadre, you got to use milk. I'm like, what? He said, you got to use milk. I said, what, what, what are you talking about? He said, uh, capsation is hot pepper. So we Spanish people, when we eat hot pepper, the milk calms it down. Yes, yes. So I said, okay, I gave him some Leche. money. Let's go to the thing of milk. So now I'm in the shower pouring milk on my boys, and the guys coming in, they're looking at me like, what the? Yeah, see? The milk actually worked. So then when I meet with Icy Hot, I was like, you know what? It's hot. You guys, this company works. That is your testimonial for Icy Hot? <laughs> yes, it is. It, is it, it yes. set your testicles on fire? Yes, it did. Oh, boy. By I the way, that's Conan O'Brien. My life. It's, Conan, it's Conan's uh, that's, podcast? Yeah, that you call Bob and Tom. Uh, that's Conan that sounds like Bob and Tom. Um... I would pour. I would think you would. You would. Uh, I, this is this is brilliant. I'm glad I figured this out. I don't know if I'm ever going to use icy hot or Ben Gay again. Figured out. Shucks, uh, janitor figured it out. I'll take credit for that. Oh, I didn't mean to say it that way. But um, I've used I've used milk before. I had something called Dave's Insanity for Sauce. If you're familiar yeah. with it, you, you know use it's it for terrible. your mouth. You could. I mean, the same thing. I just couldn't imagine it when but I was. I wouldn't pour it on there. I would put it in a bucket or something and try to soak them. Thirteen years old, and I go running into the kitchen, taking the milk out of the refrigerator, jumping in the shower. With the like milk. get a glass from the kitchen, pour milk in there, and then just you know hold it in there. Yeah, and throw that glass away. Nobody's drinking out of that glass ever again. Just wash it. It's no. fine. It's fine. No. What do you? There's worse things that have sat in that glass no. in the sink. I understand. And probably that. you know I gross. I understand that, but I could not, in good conscience, go. Go to the counter, grab that, go to the cabinet, go to the cupboard, and grab that cup and be like, oh, yeah, is this the one that I Yeah, I wouldn't want my, I guess in? I wouldn't want my kids drinking out of it. That'd be weird. Yeah. But my wife, if I saw her drinking out, I'd go, hey, guess what that cup's been? <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Your wife would probably throw it at you. <laughs> then you'd be ducking. And then you'd be doing some sheetrock work.